Now on to herbs that may be beneficial. There's quite a variety out there and when you think of herbs you have to think of how your pain actually feels. So yes you're having cramping but go within, sit with your uterus when you're having these cramps and think of how you're feeling. What is your menstrual cycle usually like? People with dysmenorrhea can have you know, scant, barely any blood, um, stagnant kind of state of their uterus when they're during their bleeding time, while other people have really heavy menstrual bleeding and they also are diagnosed with dysmenorrhea. So you want to think of what kind of menstrual cycle you would want, or not want, but what you had, and then consider herbs that may be best for that. You could also talk to a naturopath or um, an herbalist in your area that could prescribe a really good pain formulation for you that's specific to your kind of dysmenorrhea. So, onto the herbs. Pain reducing and muscle relaxing herbs. Um, some great ones are cramp bark and black haw. They're interchangeable, they're very similar. They're both antispasmodic, they relax smooth muscle tissue. They're analgesic, which reduces pain. And I always keep on hand cramp bark. I think it is one of the best herbs for muscle cramping across the board. Um, just as most people keep um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs in their cupboard, I keep cramp bark. Um, if you're having some kind of muscle pain, um, you can't relax, this is a great one. I've also used it in preparation for when I'm going in to have a, like a pap smear gynecological exam. I've used it when I got an IUD, I've used it for menstrual cramps, and it just relaxes the uterine muscles, and so does black haw. So cramp bark is one thing to think about, black haw, reducing pain, um, relaxing the muscles. Black cohosh is another one. Now remember, all of these are going to be something that you would do only during your bleeding time and like a few days prior to your bleeding time. This isn't something you are going to be doing all month long. So black cohosh. Black cohosh is um, also very antispasmodic and analgesic, but it also is specific for women who have menstrual cramping that radiates to their lower back and down their thighs. I have experienced this pain. It reminds me a lot of one of my labors. So this would be a great herb for that kind of aching deep, um, almost to the bone pain. Another great one would be Dong Kwai. Now, if you have heavy menstru menstrual bleeding, we do not recommend that you use this herb during your bleeding time. Um, uh, pretty much across the board, we say don't use it during your bleeding time because we cannot monitor every single woman and say, you know, um, over the internet, hey, yeah, it's okay for some of you and it's not okay for others. So pretty much across the board, we suggest that it's not recommended for the, your bleeding time. Now, if you have dysmenorrhea and you have stagnation, a scanty period, bogginess, a heavy fullness when you have your menstrual cramping, um, Dong Kwai may be a good option for you to take during your bleeding time. It's also um, a nerving, so it relaxes the nervous system. Um, it's also a sedative, so it can a mild sedative so that it can help to really relax you which will be also helpful for nervous anxiety or tension and irritability if you have that accompanying your menstrual pain. Um, if you're a person who gets digestive upset now cramping in the uterus it's right next to your digestive system can definitely cause stomach upset so it can either go constipation or diarrhea so some great ones, great herbs that also are anti-inflammatory and detoxifying are um, ginger is a great one. Having some ginger tea on hand or ginger tincture. Another one is chamomile. Chamomile is one of the most anti-inflammatory herbs out there. So having some chamomile tea on hand. Um, chamomile also crosses the board into the anxiety sedative, relaxes nervous system, and is anti-inflammatory. So it's interchangeable as well. So thinking about across the board formulations, you know, cramp bark, chamomile, um, 
a mixture of those, something like that, like things that you're going to combine that have multiple actions for your symptoms. Um, another one for anxiety um, that's really great, a lot of women also get dizziness and headache, would be motherwort. Um, it's specific for that. So motherwort is specific for its sedative, um, relaxes the nervous system, but it's also anti-inflammatory. It lowers irritability and helps stabilize you. And I love the name motherwort. That's why it's named that. Um, it's a mothering herb. <laughs> um, now if you're a person who has debilitating drop down in bed pain from dysmenorrhea, and you are really sick, nothing else is working, really consider the herb Jamaican Dogwood. Research this herb more. It is one of the best herbs. Um, it's the highest anti-spasmodic and analgesic, so it's gonna reduce pain, reduce inflammation, really go right there. It is specific for any kind of pain in the body like that, but it's really, really effective. So if you have a lot of pain, talk to an ND, or an herbalist in your area about this herb. Using herbs like this are gonna have multiple actions, which is great. Um, they're, it's not gonna be harming the liver like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are, like ibuprofen, um, when they're used over time. So something to think about. Um, another thing that you can use acutely when you're having um, pain is to have on hand like a menstrual cramp oil blend and I have another video actually um, on how to make an oil like that you can also look up our aromatherapy article which has a great recipe on how to make a menstrual oil blend the best essential oils for that that are very um, relaxing analgesic and anti-inflammatory are chamomile German chamomile is number one um, uh, sorry um, fennel, and marjoram. You can um, make an oil, like I said, or you can do a compress. So if you blended these oils or just used each one individually, if you're going to use them individually, I'd suggest chamomile. You're going to put a few drops on a warm rag, a warm hot rag, and just place it directly on your abdomen. Or you can um, get just a, cool, just a cloth, add the drops on, Make sure it's a little bit damp beforehand. Put it on your belly, then put a piece of plastic, then put a hot water bottle or a warming pack of some sort over. That really helps to soothe. I use that a lot um, for all kinds of stuff, but um, if I ever have menstrual cramps, that's what I do, and it really helps to soothe. So if you're in bed and you're not feeling good um, for menstrual cramps, then definitely try a hot compress. They work great. Um, like I said, you could also just do the menstrual oil blend and then do a warm compress over the top. Um, so long-term preventative care, going back to the weakness, the muscle weakness. Now if your uterus is weak, um, you're more likely to have dysmenorrhea like we talked about. So some great overall benefiting therapies are fertility yoga and self-fertility massage. These are going to support proper alignment of the uterus. They're going to support the hormonal feedback loop, so the communication, so you have um, hormonal balance overall. They're also going to strengthen the uterine muscles, which is really important. Um, it's going to um, promote detoxification as well. So if you have those things going for you, you're less likely to have um, muscle spasming and cramping. Um, Dr. Christian Northrup, who wrote several books but wrote Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom, points out in that book that there is a mind-body connection to dysmenorrhea as well. She's been practicing for over 25 years and she has bridged the gap between holistic practices and allopathic medicine. So what she says is that Pretty much if you've had past trauma, past sexual abuse, you ha have negative thinking or a negative connotation toward femininity, even on a subtle level. You know, our society has all these ideas and thoughts and we're bombarded by them every single day through media. 
um, that pretty soon they become ingrained and we start to think that we should be a certain way or certain ideas about ourselves. And all of this sh is believed, even by Tammy Lynn Kent, who is a great doctor um, that I've talked about, um, can be stored within the uterus. That these past traumas, these pains, these negative ideas about ourselves um, can manifest as pain during our menstrual cycle. So if you're having dysmenorrhea and you cannot think of any other way to get rid of this, um, you feel like you've tried everything, really go within. Think to yourself how your thoughts and ideas or past traumas may be contributing to your pain and how you can release those and hopefully move forward to healing and not having any more pain during that time of the month. Because this is a really sacred time, um, a time that we should embrace because this is our fertility. We as women hold this sacred place, our wombs. So if we can go forward um, with that being pain free, that would be wonderful. If you guys have any questions about um, dysmenorrhea or remedies, please let me know. And I hope all of you have a wonderful day and you go forward in peace.